Good morning, Mr. Mushi. How are you today? Fine too. So how's everyone? <laughs> Uh, Dr. Koo, good morning. You join with us. <laughs> Dr. Koo. <laughs> Dr. Musri uh, you want me to share screen your material or you want it yourself? Uh, your mic, sir. Your mic is not open yet. Dr. Musri, your mic is not open yet. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think uh, you should. Uh, I think you should put up the disabled uh, for the uh, screen share. I think. Oh yeah. Still disabled. Okay, ah, okay. Go. Good, good. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Looking good, sir. So, is it clear now? Yes, it's clear. Okay, let me check. Is it moving? Yes, moving. All right, cool. Okay, is that okay? Yes, we still wait, uh, Dr. Kuhn, for connecting. <clears throat> Dr. Ku, still there? Good morning, all attendants. Hopefully, we can start our webinar exactly at 8.30. We still wait Dr. Kuhn from Thailand for connecting. Thank you.
Good morning. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi, Dr. Perkung. I just test for my slide. So that means uh, you start to share my slide right today. Yes. Let me check the piece because now Dr. Chachong is a bit confused about webinar today. Okay, yes. Yeah. Online, no right? Worries. Yep. Okay, now please give me to check the information first. Yeah. Okay, see you later. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sure. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Okay, before we start to do our international webinar, let me share you about such information regarding this international webinar. So, for the first, the time allocation of international international webinar is at 8.30 until 11.30. So make sure you have no other agenda today because we would have a couple of attendance list in the beginning and in the end of webinar. Second, we would conduct for Q&A through two ways, uh, through comment box and live question and answer session. Third, please, to turn off your microphone. Thank you.
Mr. Musri, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Okay. Sorry for the disconnection. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine now. Well, so let's start this international webinar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, dan Salam Kebajikan. Swadika. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on the international webinar held by STIE Total Wind Semarang, Central Java, Indonesia. Well, before we come to the main session, let us start this by praying first. So the event that we will hold today will run well without any obstacle at all. Dear all participants, pray begin. Done, thank you. First of all, let us pray and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his bliss and mercy. We can join together without any obstacle here with healthy condition in joining the international webinar entitled Sustainability of Business and Crisis Management During the Pandemic of COVID-19. Second, let us greet and pray to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who had brought us to the path of light and left the darkness in this life. Well, dear ladies and gentlemen, let me say thanks to the honorable the President of STIA Total Wind Semarang, Mrs. Dr. Randa Sukiyarti, SAMM. Yes. And to the Honorable Representative of Mangun Karsa Foundation, Mrs. Emi Wardati, SAMM. And to the Honorable Mrs. Dr. Hanung Nid Nunjak, Dean of Hatiai Business School, Hatiai University, Thailand. To the Honorable Mr. Professor Dr. M. Suyanto, M.M., Rector of Amicum University, Special Region of Yogyakarta, Indonesia. And to the Honorable Mr. Dr. Jackie Musri, the President of ICBS, Indonesia. And also to the Honorable Dear Participant of International Webinar, wherever you are. Well, ladies and gentlemen, next, listening to the National Anthem of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya. Dear participants, Please stand up.
Next, listening to the national anthem of Thailand playing Chat Thai, dear participants, please stand up. <laughs> Thank you. Now you may sit down, please. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on this very special occasion, let me convey the structure of the event today as follows. First, speech from the president of STA Total Wind Semarang, Mrs. Dr. Randa Sugiyarti, SAMM. Second, our first panelist, Mrs. Dr. Hanungnit Nunchek, Dean of Hatia Business School, Hatia University, Thailand. Third, Ice breaking will be guided by the moderator, Mrs. Dian Kurniazari. Fourth, the next panelist will be Mr. Professor Dr. M. Suyanto M.M., Rector of Amicam University, Special Region of Yogyakarta, Indonesia. And then ice breaking will be guided by the moderator, Mrs. Dian Kurniazari. Sixth, our last panelist will be Mr. Dr. Jackie Mursri, the president of ICBS Indonesia. And then discussion and question and answer session for the last is closing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's open this event by saying Basmalah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Now, we would like to invite the president of STIA Total Win, Mrs. Dr. Sugiyarti, SAMM, to deliver for her speech. Mrs. Sugiyarti, the time is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Salam Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan, dan Swadika. Greeting from Totawin. Menjelaskan Rebel, Dr. Kanumit Hukjad, Dean of Hatia Business School, Hatia University, Thailand. To the Honorable Professor Dr. Suyanto, Magister Management, Rector of Amicom, Special Region of Yogyakarta, Indonesia. The Honorable Dr. Jackie Musri, the President of ICSB Indonesia, and the Honorable All Participant of today's webinar, wherever you are. Welcome to the International Webinar held by Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Ekonomi Total Win and in collaborate with Hatia University and ICSB. This event is one of benefit from our MOU we had signed long, long time ago. This International Webinar entitled sustainability of business and crisis management during the pandemic of COVID-19, it will give positive impact to us. In the midst of pandemic, we feel the world without borders, lack of good feelings. We all open the world feel the same self fed to overcome it, other and find solution to survive and develop. However, the amount of donation we have today, we will dis distribute to donation of ACT to the sufferers of COVID-19. Thank you very much to the part participants of today's webinar. We know that sharing is caring. Finally, welcome, welcome to the international webinar held by Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Ekonomi Total Wins Semarang. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Mrs. Sugiyarti. Uh, now we would like to invite our moderator, Mrs. Dian Kurnia. So, welcome to the seat, Mrs. Dian. How are you today? I'm fine. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jati. Okay, great. Oh, uh, well, now we invite Mrs. Dr. Hanunit Nunchek, Dean of Hatay Business School, Hatay University, Thailand, as our first speaker. Oh, yeah, uh, the moderator, please, to your turn. Time is yours. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jati. Yes. Hello, Dr. Krum. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You look morning. beautiful today. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to start our first session with Dr. Kanunit Yunchek from Hatyai University. Let me start your screen for our speakers. Okay. Is uh, our speakers, Dr. Kanunit Yunchek, Dean of Hatyai Business School, Hatyai University, Thailand. Her education background is from Doctor of Business Administration from University Science Malaysia, Master of Business Administration Majority in Marketing from Ramkhaeng University, Bachelor of Business Administration, Majority in Finance and Banking from Ramkhaeng University. And her research, uh, the newest one is uh, the empirical study of logistic and supply chain system in Patalung tourism for senior tourists. Okay, uh, here's some her background research. Okay, uh, Dr. Kung. Uh, you want me to share your PowerPoint or you want to share your talk? Okay, can you share my PowerPoint? Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Kung, time is yours. Okay, thank you. Can I start now? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Before we start from my topic today, I would like to say Selamat pagi and My name is Dr. Kanili Tichek, or you can call me Dr. Kung. Okay, before we start from my session, please give me five minutes to introduce my university, Hat Yai University. Is located at Hat Yai, Song Kha Province. Hat Yai University is the first private university in southern of Thailand. According to Hat Yai University, is to be the leading private university in Thailand, which go to international and produce professional graduate for the good of society. Uh, Hat Yai University has six fac faculty and one college, including Hatyai Business School, that is my school, and Faculty of Law, Faculty of Education and Liberal Arts, Faculty of Science and Technology, Faculty of Science and Technology, and Faculty of Political Science and the Jesuit International College. And for Hatyai University, uh, UI Korean Matrix World in uh, University ranking on 
2019 of Hanyang University is the first of green university in Southern and the fifth of green private university and four hundred and seventeenth of the world for green university. Okay. After you know from my university, and now I would like to present for my topic today. I'm the dean of uh, Hanyang Business School because before, before COVID-19, we gave the consult for business to entrepreneur in Southern of Thailand. And during the COVID, we know that in the first half of 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a more negative impact to all business. With the ongoing COVID-19 crisis peaking around the world, business and customer suffering from this. Okay, please do go to the next slide. Okay. Most business lockdowns such as retail outlet, shopping mall, movie theater, because of it is important for everyone to continue social distancing. However, business must new navigate the operational challenges during the COVID-19 pandemic because the situation on COVID-19. For example, we need to think of the impact of strategy as the journey to allied team must start to build the competency. Most business which they invest in before to be more digital and data driven and in in the cloud to have more variable cost structure, agile operation and automation to create stronger capability in e-commerce and security. Impact on workforce as pairing people with opportunity is silent. Most companies are still determining how they will work in the short and long term at workforce and communities try to function and perform while structuring to cope with what is happening in their daily life. And for the impact on operation and restructure for global resilience with the COVID-19. Fundamental change in customer behavior, supply chains and load to market are knocking companies of balance. And the next one, we need to think of the impact of finance and building the resort to sign new opportunities. Action taken now can have an immediate impact on the survival of the company. How quickly it rebound from the gold downtown and sustainability going forward. And next, we need to think of the impact of technology. This is the most important for COVID-19 and most business chain and use for technology and building technology for the strength to success. Even before COVID-19, many organizations face considerable uh, technology challenges now COVID-19 and almost after COVID-19 is pushing company to repeatedly operate in new way and technology is being tested and never before. And the next one is the impact on industry at turning massive challenge into meaningful change consumer. Consumer uh, demand pattern are shifting global supply chain and disrupt and remain under pressure. And different religion, market and government are responding uniquely to the COVID-19 crisis. Companies must continue adapt to new the uncertain market condition. And what your business should consider doing now and next. And the most important for this topic today as the impact on customer that's connecting to uh, with changing customer habits. 
the COVID-19 has brought business to reevaluate how employees deliver relevant customer experience where they work and how digital China can be used to support business continuously through the crisis, the beyond. And for the last uh, two months ago, uh, we found that for the business impact survey COVID-19, I'm searching via internet, I found that 85% uh, of American to others buying habit because of COVID-19. Customers expect to change their purchase behavior because of the virus. So at the same time, Bangkok, Bangkok posts the website of Thailand. Uh, Bangkok Post is uh, found that they have survey and found that 57% were social distancing from friends and 50% were working from home. And consumer 49% have also avoided leaving their home. And 42% stay away from public transport when they leave from home. Consumers were buying more essential since social distancing order were imposed. 27% non uh grocery and 25% household had cleaning supply. And the last one is 25% frozen foods that uh, consumer interesting to buy. So I come to my topic today, the important points for how to survive for the crisis period. Marketing is the solution in, the, in a crisis period. The entrepreneur should know how consumer behavior will help them to decide better marketing plan as solution for their business. For example, for the customer behavior is a physiological part of an individual which makes the difference in purchasing and good and service or anything else. The behavior of any consumer depend on many factors which are very important for, um, for any marketing management team in any business or any organization with deal in delivery to consumers. The global market press is a study in uh, diversity among consumers, producer and marketers retailer, advertising media, cultural, and custom, and of course, the individual or physiological behavior. However, the object of the study of consumer behavior is to provide conceptual and technical tools to enable to the marketer to apply them to marketing practice, both profit and non-profit. And consumer behavior is very important to the business because it enables them to understand and predict buying behavior of customer in the marketplace. So that's why business should be thinking of customer and their behavior. It is concerned not only with what consumer buy, but also with why they buy it when and where and how they buy. This is uh, for what, why, when, where, how the business or inter entrepreneur should be think for uh, consider the customer behavior. The next, uh, after we conclude about consumer behavior, uh, Hatya University from Hatya Business School or my school, we, we have the survey in, South, uh, in Southern Thai border province uh, on five, five provinces uh, about the survey of consumer behavior before, during, and after COVID-19. Today, I will share the result to all of you 
this is a, just a little bit for, uh, a little bit for the result that the entrepreneur can bring to improve their business in the future or after COVID-19. Maybe in your country can uh, can bring to to use for your business also. Uh, for consumer survey is the met methodology used to study consumer behavior in five provinces, including Songkha. Songkha is the province that at the university stay and stone, Yala, Patani, and Alatiwa. Because five provinces have the border nearly Malaysia, especially most foreigner tourists love to visit Songkra and stone and next to other places in Thailand. So that's why this is the target of my school to survey the consumer behavior to help the entrepreneur to improve their business in southern of Thailand. Okay, this is the result that I bring some result to show today. The survey compared consumer behavior between before and during COVID-19 on consumer purchase channel. We found that the during COVID-19, most consumers change their behavior to buy the product via online. For example, they buy product at store decrease from 82.6% to 64.8%. Uh, and they buy the product via Facebook increase from 35% to 46.9%. But via marketplace increase just only 0.9%. Interesting. And for food delivery, for it at home. Most consumers are all of us during the COVID work at home and eat a lot at home also. Uh, increase uh, for the food delivery is uh, increased 8.2%. So this is the information to suggest to entrepreneur to conclude and consider to the strategy in the future, how they uh, provide a strategy for their business. Okay, I just compared with, uh, before and during COVID. And the next one, the survey compared consumer behavior before and during COVID on consumer payment choice. Interesting that we found that during COVID-19, most consumers change their payment for buy the product. For example, they use cash decrease from 90% to 71%, exactly because they don't go to the shop. So they, they, uh, they can increase their cash to buy the product. But they use internet banking increase from before COVID, just only 1.6%. And we can see that they pay via credit cards increased from before COVID more than 20%. Interesting for bank to uh, join or to be the partner with the company or the business. And consumer use money wallet increased 3.8%. Also interesting for this point. And the next one, the survey compare consumer behavior between before, during, and after COVID-19 on consumer purchase time by offline channel. We found that most consumers still buy the product in the afternoon, even before, during, and after COVID. And they a bit change behavior to buy the product in the morning after COVID-19. Interesting, again, uh, as our results show that after COVID-19, consumer will buy the product after 9 p.m. less than before and during COVID-19. So this is the important point. Why after 9 p.m.? they change their behavior. I just uh, suggest that last time, 
they buy product via online after 9, 9 p.m. more than after COVID. Okay. For the next slide and next result, we compare about the survey consumer behavior between before, during, and after COVID-19 on consumer purchase time via online channel. Okay, we found that after COVID-19, most consumers will buy the product in the morning, increase more than before and during COVID. And after COVID-19, business or e-commerce need to provide the strategies to for the customer to buy the product via online since in the morning until midnight, you see for the result, the customer will buy via online. Because the result of the survey show that after COVID-19, consumer will increase percentage to buy the product via online all the time. This is the result that we found from our survey, the survey from Hatay Business School, Hatay University. Okay, the next one for the result that I would like to show today, the last slide for the result, but not last slide for today. Okay, however, we found that most of consumer in five southern Thai border province, they will buy the product buy offline more than we are online. So you see, 52% for they still buy the product offline for at the store or the shop or the supermarket. That means the business must be provide strategy to support their business through good products and good service also. So it is the, um, the factor for uh, increase customer satisfaction. So that means the business should be prepared about how to serve the customer different from the competitive. That is the challenging for performance of business in five southern Thai border province or who want to invest business in this area. In brief for the consumer behavior Consumer attitude, behavior, and purchasing habits are changing, and many of these new ways will remain post pandemics. Why purchase are currently centered on the most basic needs. People are shopping more, uh, sorry, people are shopping more continuously, buying local and embracing digital commerce. And we can move forward, we will see an increase in the virtual workforce and more people work from home and enjoy doing so. So this is the tactics that we need to prepare after COVID. Okay, for the next slide. Uh, I will give the tactic for all business from our surveys and we search for the article to support our survey, how to plan marketing strategy after COVID-19 for business sustainable. Uh, for case study of five certain Thai borders, we found the uh, article to support the strategy that how they suggest that the marketing strategy is supposed to develop effective response to changing marketing uh, market environment by defining market segments and also developing and positioning product offering for those target markets. And for Nelson, he found that companies have to use proactive strategies and to not react on other events, but creating them. Creating is most important for the business to create new strategy to solve the problem of the business. For four tactics for entrepreneurs can, com can complete in the new marketplace. First, uh, they can improve and personalize targeting, enhance 
that business effort to target shopper would have a high propensity to engage in certain activities, such as during the COVID, more customer cooking at home, right? Most lady in Thailand, they just start for cooking at home during the COVID. I don't know for Indonesia, for the other country. I'm also now I'm become expert on dairy fruit. And by, by using two lights, uh, display advertising also, more important now we are online and social media activation to drive engagement in more personalized content and call to action. And the second is rainfall consumer category interest, invest in better online and install experience that speak to customer about certain category. This experience can take many form from online forum uh, to install display and provide content to promotional offers sent to chopper mobile phone. And the company sh should be invest in targeted uh, subsequent acquisition with e-commerce, the benefits of logging in the trip and the potential for a new customer to make recalling purchase can more than offset the marketing and promotional costs involved in uh, acquiring that customer. <coughs> and the last one, reimagine loyalty programs is most important. But some, now most, uh, uh, most of my friends say that loyalty is so difficult. How give customer loyalty Okay, we try to think behind approach that as giving customer a discount. Okay, discount is one one choice. Uh, I think popular choice for promotional. Today, loyalty program are focused on earning and learning reward to customer specific interest areas such as cooking and entertaining, gardening, gardening also now, home improvement wellness or arts and craft. What if customer earn reward based not only on their spending levels, but on their engagement in specific categories in which you aim to deliver a differentiated experience to the customer? Okay, for the next slide. This is the example for tactics of entrepreneur can compete in the new marketplace. I give the example is the famous supermarket in Thailand, top supermarket or top market under Senton Group. If we consider the result of the Hadai Business School survey before the, the previous slide, top market collaboration with Ministry of Commerce to support Thai farmers in selling summer fruits last two months ago, in addition to lock price and extra discount to help Thai people get through the COVID-19 crisis. You see, CSR already. They are the partner already, the big partner for Top Supermarket, you see. And the farmer also become partner of Top Supermarket. Good strategy. And they also give the, the information to customer to download their application. They also have Facebook, they also have website. So AI can know if you want to buy the fruit for cook in, in your kitchen. Top supermarket become in your Facebook now. Okay. Uh, and also the tactics for consumer convenience. The next slide. Uh, you see, the entrepreneur can be provide the permanent choice to support the, the future customer after COVID-19, such as contact to the bank or find the partner to join your business. Now in Thailand, most business, they contact with bank for the internet banking also 
uh, Gascon Bank in Thailand, they have the partner with Facebook to help the entrepreneur who, who sell the product via Facebook. Easy, easy to control their business for the SME or new entrepreneur. Okay. And also for e-wallet. Okay. Okay. Next slide. For the next slide, I will give information. Um, for example, about e-logistics, because now e-logistics is most important because the business need to integrate to strategy of marketing, technology, and logistics to improve their operation for serve convenient to customer to increase the income and profits of the business. So if you see the the picture of e-logistics for business, because uh, this picture I give to my MBA student to discuss during the COVID, how to help, how you help the business to survive for the COVID crisis. Okay, I give, for example, if for e-logistics, we think of supply chain, start from supplier. If in the retail business, from supplier and distributor and customer. This is the channel for the marketing. So not only marketing now, we need to use the technology to help uh, bring the product from supplier to the end customer. And for the customer convenience, we need to use the uh, logistic to send the product to customer. Now, uh, most of the company about logistics, uh, they have a lot of promotion. So, until now, uh, don't know how to choose which one is better for them, but it's better for customer. Okay. And not only the, the survey for support entrepreneur about how to survive on COVID-19, Hat Yai Business School also have the webinar like this, but uh, on, May to, uh, on May last two months ago, the next slide. Okay. During COVID-19, Hat Yai Business School had organized the webinar for help the entrepreneur to plan about their business during and after COVID. And the topic, consumer training. Uh, by guest speakers who are expert on consumer behavior, commercial, tourism, SME, and OTOP product, or we call one tambon one product. We call OTOP. Uh, that means local product of Thailand. So we, we invite guest speakers who are expert for this, for joy, for share their experience to entrepreneur how to survive for the crisis management on COVID-19. It's very useful for entrepreneurs in Southern of Thailand and also around Thailand. And for the last slides, I think it's the most important for me today. For the um, certain, uh, sustainable business, we also think of our working Lamanai. They, they uh, he teach us about sufficiency economy <laughs> for three points. Uh, I would like to bring the theory of the sufficiency economy philosophy from His Majesty King Pumipon Adminides on three factors for sustainable business, including the first, moderation with reasons in the sense of not too much or not too little is an Eastern concept. As uh, the king has said, being moderate does not mean being too strictly from girls. Consumption of luxury items is permissible, but choose be moderate according to one's need. And the second is the reasonableness require that the choice we may be justifiable by using academic approach, legal principle, moral value, also social norms. 
So today I can chair academic session to entrepreneur. Uh, I feel proud to, to can chat to everyone today. And for the last one is Prudence emphasize the need to build in resilience against the least risk allies from internal and external chains by having good risk management. Sufficiency economy recognize that the uh, uh, situation that's in front our life and dynamic and uh, for the, the good future for everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Dr. Hanani Nunsek. What an amazing presentation you have. Okay, so Mrs. Moderator, we come to the ice breaking session, right? Yeah. Okay, and then please to yourself. Okay, interesting uh, material from Dr. Kuhn. So I can say that. Uh, while in COVID, uh, impact on strategy, strategy, workforce, operation, finance, technology, industry, and customers. So the main topic of Dr. Ko is impact of customers in behavior that customers expect to change their purchase behavior because of the virus. Uh, Dr. Ko, in Thailand, is locked down too during the COVID nineteen. Yeah, but but now my country can solve the problem the problem for COVID nineteen as so well. How many how many lockdown? How many months? Uh, now we no lockdown. We can go anywhere, but we need to stay. Mm -hmm. And uh, some business, uh, most of the business in Thailand, uh, they have like a handbook for their business. Mm how -hmm. to pro prevent their business. For example, for the convenience store, we mm -hmm. need to reduce jail and, and give for the process of them before entry the convenience store, something like that. It's also in the hotel. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. And that uh, impacts too much in uh, areas of business business tourism, retail, and education also, right? Okay. Uh, and I agree with you, uh, while we work from home, uh, we, you get a new hobby, cooking. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, uh, while we work from home, the increase of we uh, see uh, YouTube for the new recipe is for increase. <laughs> and also we can improve uh, our academic field. Yes, after. okay. Uh, and I guess uh, the creating is important in business. Uh, we can say that innovation is important in business. Actually, uh, in uh, during COVID nineteen, we need to innovate our product, right? Okay, so marketing need technology. I guess every uh, area of business has a uh, higher technology now. Even the traditional market, as you can uh, say that uh, modern market in Thailand now is use Facebook uh, and other social media. It happened, uh, not happened before COVID. And now, and well, COVID, we use all the technology. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, next speaker, Priyanka. Okay. Uh, before we next to the second speaker, let me remind you something. The first attendance list has opened at 9 a.m. and it will be closed at 9.50. So make sure you, uh, you have to uh, fill your name in the attendance list. Okay, Mandian, and 
I hear from the operator if Prof Yanto has important agendas, but uh, he will come here maybe at 9.50. So is it possible if we switch Dr. Jackie Musri to the second speaker? Uh, okay, all the attendance, all your questions, uh, all the discussion, we're gonna uh, end of the speakers. So hold your question. You may you may write your questions in the Q and A, and I'll read read to you uh, to the speakers and the speakers. Uh, also in Q and A, you may write to whom the questions you want. Uh, Mr. Musri, are you ready to be oh, yes, second sir. speaker? No worries, yes, I'm ready. Okay, okay. We, you. we change you to be the second speaker. Oh yeah, no uh, worries. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Sure. Thank you, right. Doctor. Okay, uh, uh, well, can I share my slide now? Okay, hold All on. right, thank you. Give me a second and here we uh, go. I... Okay, shall I start or I should wait further? Okay, you you may start now, or I introduce okay. your no. background first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe later after your presentation. All right. Okay, I'm fine with that. All right. Uh, so once again, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, what you call it? I would like to say hello to uh, um, uh, Dr. Anders Sugiarti, Ibu Sugiarti. How are you? Um, and then also to Ibu Emmy from the Mangun Karso uh, Foundation and Professor Kanungi Nunchek, Dean of uh, Business School of uh, Hatkai University, and also Professor Suyanto from uh, Amcom Yogyakarta, as well as all the uh, academicians, uh, lecturers, students. Good morning to all of you and um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semuanya. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya. Salam kebajikan, and of course, study cup. Okay, um, I like uh, the presentation of uh, Professor Kanungi Nunchak. It's, uh, you know, I like the, when, when she said, like, you know, uh, marketing is the solution. Well, I'm, I couldn't more agree <laughs> on that. Uh, I will add more further about uh, what uh, she has uh, delivered just now, and um, I will take it from a different angle. This is, I'm talking about the roles of women. Um, especially in Indonesia, uh, it's not really uh, what you call it. Um, not many people seen from this uh, aspect that you know women can actually uh, do a lot in the, in the, uh, uh, during this uh, COVID nineteen pandemic and even beyond. That's why my title will you know as 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 you see on the screen, it's roles of women in SMEs during COVID nineteen pandemic and beyond. So this is the thing. Um, well, this is, well, ICSB, I think, and read it later on. It's a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, well-established organization founded in 1955 and headquartered in uh, George Washington University, USA. And they have a uh, representative in about uh, 85 countries in last year, in 2019. And, of course, we're interested in education, research, exchange ideas, and, you know, uh, we, we're supporting how to enhance the entrepreneurship uh, of the, uh, you know, um, uh, small medium enterprises all around the world, and we have we have four pillars actually. We have the pillars of uh, policymakers, which is uh, mostly the government officers, government ministries, and we have also uh, a, a, a pillar from the academicians, researchers, and of course the business practitioners. Well, that's uh, 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 what you call it. The, uh, a short introduction about uh, COVID uh, about the ICSD. And if I may show you this, okay. Okay, this is uh, women in Indonesia uh, in general, of course, as, as we can see that uh, Indonesia in, in 20, and I think this year, 2020 years, we're entering the, uh, the beginning of the demographic bonus and we'll reaching the peak in 2030. This means that, you know, Regardless of uh, what happened now with uh, what happened now in, in around the world with this uh, COVID pandemic, 
but uh, you know the 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 dependency ratio is expected expected to be mostly dulu enggak lu ini masih menjamuk itoknya masih dia aja anu no Oh, well, can I can I go on now? Sure, you mind. Okay, sure. So uh, the, depend, the dependency ratio will be uh, will be getting better from time to time, and uh, this will uh, perhaps this will have a very strong impact on on Indonesian economy, and we have you know millennials will will consist uh, will will be dominating the uh, the uh, uh, demography of Indonesia in uh, 2020 to 2030. So, and women. It's almost 50% of the population. And this is a huge, big, uh, what you call it, um, uh, energy for Indonesia, actually. As you can see, we have uh, a long time ago in my company, we developed this, uh, I think about 10 years ago, perhaps uh, more than 10 years ago, we, we see there are three uh, important subcultures in business, youth, women, and netizen. So as you can see, let, let's put aside about youth and netizen. Okay, let's see the second element of these uh, subcultures. You see women. This is, I, I, uh, I uh, what you call it, I um, um, quoted from uh, Sylvia Hewlett. She's the CEO of the uh, Center for uh, Talent Innovation. This is what she said. The biggest emerging market in the world is not China, it's women. <laughs> yes, it's women. <laughs> China is what 1.3 billion uh, uh, population. Women in the world is like what, four, <laughs> three point something billion women in the whole wide world. So, so she said that you know uh, we 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 don't pay this uh, market the respect it deserves. Yes, this is a huge market, huge power, and uh, you know they're getting uh, stronger and stronger and getting more uh, important from time to time. Uh, uh, in in all uh, areas of industry, business, uh, government, and so on and so on. So this is women in Indonesia. There's some policies on gender equality in Indonesia. In year 2000, the president released the what we call it the Peraturan Presiden Nomor 9 about the gender equality in 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 the country's development. Uh, and in 2006, we have the first draft of government policy regarding gender equality by Ministry of Women Empowerment and uh, Child Protection. That's 2006. And in 2010, the National Committee of Women examined some uh, regulations, some regional regulations in, in some uh, areas in Indonesia. They found some like 63 regulation that against the gender equality principles. This is, you know, quite interesting. And if we see further, this is uh, uh, from the GAP report, World Economic Forum. As, uh, we can find that in 2020, Indonesia still ranked 85 of 155 uh, countries in gender equality index. So this is, uh, you know, we still have to do things in in uh, uh, pushing up this uh, uh, um, gender equality in gender e uh, equality in Indonesia. And Indonesia boasts uh, the world's larger share of senior and leadership roles held by women, 55 percent. This is also very interesting uh, uh, statistic, actually. So uh, having said that, you know, we see that women is a very potential power that we had in Indonesia. And I'll show you some facts later on of this. Okay, next. This is some of the facts in Indonesia from quote unquote domestic uh, you know, roles up to the professionals. Women really contribute significant value creation in wide range of sectors. You have this uh, Ibu Ratno Henning, for instance, is a parenting book writer. Sheila Sina, Dila Sina, home cook influencer, Dwi Handa, mompreneur, and we even have the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ibu Ratno Marsudi, yes, that's, you know, she's fantastic. We have, you know, Raisa, the doctor and model as well, the medical doctor and model as well. And we have also a lot of, you know, uh, women in, you know, uh, you know uh, holding a very important position, even from the dem domestic sector to professionals. So this is something that really, really interesting. And if you can see here, if they're working from home, like what we're, doing, we're all doing right now, they're you know collecting a lot of information and they are holistic shoppers. This will might you know, relate to uh, 
uh, Professor Kanungi Nuchek said that, you know, shifting, yes, I agree with all the shifting. We have, we, all the consumer behavior are shifting right now. And if we can see that women now, they're not only holding money, but they're now decision makers and even policy makers. That's what we have to put in mind. And they are household managers, you know, in 70s, in 80s, that they might be only, quote unquote, excuse my word, uh, I'm, I'm not, you know, just, uh, just for the sake of illustration, they hold the money like a cashier in the household. But right now, we should, you know, see them as the, what we call it, the CFO, the chief financial officers in the house, or perhaps the ministry of, uh, uh, what you call it, the ministry of uh, finance in the house. They're not only holding money and making decisions, but they make policies. So this is the power of women that we see, uh, at least in Indonesia, uh, in the last uh, couple, uh, one decade or more. In the formal sectors, in the formal workforce, you can see that, you know, in Indonesia, they, 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 there are some like almost 40% of national labor force, and they contribute almost one third of the GDP of Indonesia. So this is what we have to put in mind, how powerful they are. And this is give the, the idea that, you know, if we can empower them more, it will give a very significant impact to the economy. That's as simple as that. They hold the money, they have business, they make policies. What more can be uh, than that? Okay, so this is, this is what, what we can, we, we can you know, uh, put in mind uh, at least uh, uh, for now. This is, this is all another statistic. Women run majority of SMEs in Indonesia. Look at this, more than 50% of small enterprises are owned by women. I went all around Indonesia from Sabang to Merauke, put it that way, okay? And I met so many SMEs and most of them are women. I was, I was like, I was stunned like, wow, this is cool, man. I mean, like, you know, this give, uh, give me a very uh, 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 strong optimism that, you know, they can, you know, if we, we, we uh, put them, we give them chance, we enforce them, it will have a very strong impact on, in Indonesia, especially SMEs contributed up to the 60, 70% of the GDP of Indonesia. So this is why they're very strategic. They're holding very strategic position. Look at this, 34% medium-sized enterprise owned by women. And look at this, almost 10% women-owned SME contributes, uh, 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 what you call it, contribution to the GDP. So this is really, really a serious thing to, to be considered. And let's talk about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic to SME. Um, this is the, based on the report that we, we collect from the Ministry of uh, Cooperatives and SMEs of uh, the Republic of Indonesia um, uh, recently. Well, pandemic affecting most of SME sectors. This is the first time in the history you know, in the 1997, 1998, we have we had that uh, a very uh, severe crisis. SMEs are just were, were just fine at that time. In 2008, we have another financial crisis. SMEs are just fine, but right now, it it, it you know it got a very uh, a big blow from this uh, uh, pandemic. You know, it it hits almost every sectors: handicraft, uh, food and beverage, creative industry, fashion, travel. Everything, everything, every sectors, and this is, uh, I think, uh, uh, aligned with uh, Professor uh, Kanungit uh, Nuchek said before that. You know, if we have a decrease in sales, difficulties in financing, obstacles in distribution. I like when when Professor Kanungit, Kanungit uh, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, discussing about the logistics and difficulties in finding supplies. This is also very difficult, and impacting all points of the value chain. And the thing is, SMEs in Indonesia, they are the a place uh, for the, they absorb almost 90 something percent of the national workforce. So this is very, very uh, crucial to, to put our attention to uh, SMEs. Or expand it, medium, small, and uh, sorry, micro, small, medium enterprises. If you would like to expand it, expand, uh, uh, expand it uh, further. And this is uh, what, uh, what we did in ICIC. We did a research. Look at this. Uh, this is what happened. This pandemic hit every aspect in the, in the organization, in the SME, uh, the marketing aspect, 
the operational aspect, like like what uh, Professor Kanunit uh, Nuchak uh, uh, explained before, and you know, operational aspect, the human resource aspect, the financial aspect, all aspect of the organizations are you know affected by this uh, uh, this uh, uh, what you call it the uh, pandemic. Uh, government, you know, they released a scheme to help SME, of course, and uh, uh, President Joko Widodo uh, led the mitigation and, you know, uh, uh, he focused on three things, health, social, uh, uh, what you call it, social aspect of, uh, of uh, uh, sectors in Indonesia and as well as SME. These, these three things, three sectors are very important in Indonesia right now, the focus of the president. And they launched and he launched the five scheme for SME's protection and recovery. And, uh, you know, uh, this will, you know, hopefully this will help to sustain uh, the SMEs uh, uh, during this uh, uh, and even after the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. And th this, this, is, this is a summary of the, the scheme of uh, launched by the government, by the president. Scheme number one, the social aids. Of course, it's, it's a very uh, uh, long, what you call it, uh, uh, explanation about this, but they just summarize it uh, as, as like what you can see here is very simple to, to summarize. It's, it's easier for you to understand it for us. Uh, social aids and number two, tax incentive for SMEs, right? Number three, the loan restructuring for SMEs uh, working capital. And um, scheme number four, loan relaxation for SMEs. Number five is also very important, how all government institutions are instructed to be the off taker, to absorb all the uh, outputs of those uh, SMEs uh, uh, business. So this is a very, very good uh, scheme. The, and this is the general portrait of SMEs in Indonesia. You can see that some of them still surviving. Even they have, they have a big blow, they're declining, but still surviving. Some of them, you know, even growing, right? So they can serve more. In, both SMEs surviving and servicing, the declining and the growing uh, SMEs. These are the conditions that are expected to survive and continue operations during and after the pandemic. But we also have so many SMEs that collapsing, they're seizing uh, from operations, stop, shut down, nothing they can do about it because you know the demand is not there, the supply is not there, they cannot sell, they cannot stop. They are collapsing. We presume that you know a lot of uh, uh, SMEs are collapsing right now. And why they collapse? This is a very interesting question. First of all, about the resources they don't have. If they have the resources, they own the capabilities to leverage those resources. And even they can, they have the capability, they don't have the competency sometimes. So it's a very complicated uh, situation. I'm not going to discuss it right now, but uh, those three, three things are the, the main factors I think that we have to uh, uh, discuss next time. Okay, so we need more comprehensive, comprehensive scheme for, for, for the, this kind of uh, collapsing SMEs to prevent a more serious economic uh, problem. And if we relate the scheme with the, with the condition of the SMEs, scheme number one, it's, you know, okay, for, for the collapsing uh, SMEs. Scheme number two, three, and four, it's, you know, for all the declining and growing SMEs, they can prepare in the short term and actualize their plan in the long term, where scheme number five can, you know, uh, take uh, take place to help them. And if you can see successful implementation depends on two things, the SME itself and the government. And government cannot control this. And sadly, most of them, they have a very weak, sort of somewhat, I would say like that, okay? And still, this is a predictive, uh, uh, predictive, uh, what you call it, uh, 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 what you call it, analysis. they quite weak entrepreneurship and very low professionalism. On the other hand, government, they have a very good policies, just like what you uh, heard from me just now. But again, execution is another, another thing because most of, the, most of the challenge are not on the policy making, not on the policies itself, but more on execution. You need a very quick, uh, execution. They need to coordinate with so many uh, institutions, teams, uh, whatever working force, governors, mayor, and everything, even the region, right? And they have to monitor it very well. So all the package, the scheme will go directly to the right target, uh, what you call it, SMEs. 
So this is another challenge, but this is what a government can control. So they need to expedite, expedite the execution. Now, given having said that, there are two things that we can you know, empower women, make them more professional, support them to be more professional and make them more entrepreneurial. It's just two things. If they're more professional, if they're more entrepreneurial, they will be more powerful. That's, the, that's my hypothesis. Being more professional, Make sure they have a they 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 they, they, uh, they treat their company as a real company, right? It's very uh, legitimate and everything. So have easy access to capital or funding. Being more professional, recruit high quality resources, human resources, and they have strategy to tap the market demand. As we can see that you know we have to change, we have to be innovative. It's over here. Being innovative meaning what? We have to review the segment. We have to review our product portfolio. We have to review how to communicate our brand. Because as like Professor Kanunit uh, Nuchek said, that the lot, that there's a lot of, there are a lot of shifting right now. And we have to have this proper financial report. Most of SMEs, they don't have a proper financial report. That's why they cannot have easy access to capital or funding. And of course, digitalization. This is very, very extremely important. So they have to be an omni organization. They, they can you know, conduct their business offline and online, Integrate, integrating between online and offline, right? Not only integration, but be consistent both in online and offline. Now offline is, okay, it's you know, uh, a bit lower right now because you know, we're, not, we're doing social distancing, but now it's, everything is uh, you know, trying to opening up. But still, uh, in the future, we have to be an omni organization, integrating between online and offline and consistent in both online and offline. Be more entrepreneurial. Most people only see the threats. No, we have to see the opportunities as well. Find the opportunity to sustain their business, willing to take risk, that's entrepreneur, but not just risk, but calculated risk. If you don't calculate your risk, meaning you're a, you're, you're a speculant, you're doing speculation, that's not entrepreneur. And number three, engage and collaborate with others, open your network, do this, that, whatever. Network is very important. If you don't collaborate, you know, you don't align with other uh, SMEs, you don't integrate with other resources, you're not gonna grow up and you're not you're going to, to uh, speed up and scale up your business. So uh, before I end up my presentation, this is my, sim uh, allow me to, to offer you a, a very simple hypothesis that you know, might be interesting for further research. Number one, if we can you know, pump up the professionalism and entrepreneurship in, uh, you know, what you call it, in a, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, for women, if women have a higher professionalism and entrepreneurship, then we will have a better women entrepreneurs. And we have better women entrepreneurs, then we have better SME performance. And as, as I mentioned before, the SME contributed 60 something percent of Indonesian GDP, then it will impact to what we call it the uh, economic growth. So this is how important the role of women, especially during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. You check your WhatsApp, everybody's selling things through your WhatsApp and most of them are women. So this is what we have to really uh, harness the power of women to, you know, support the economic growth. It's like America in, in the forties, when all the men went to war, all the manufacturing companies, all the, uh, you know, uh, 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 are, are, are run by women as the main majority workforce. So this is what I, I try to, uh, what you call it, uh, 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 provide you some illustration about how women can, can support the nation, especially in economic growth. So this is my hypothesis. And this is the conclusion. Women has what we, have what, what we call it the given power. Now they run half of small and medium enterprises, half of them. In fact, they are the financial, financial decision makers in the household. They make policies in the household and they manage the money. They also own the business. That's the given power. Can you imagine if you empower them with professionalism and entrepreneurship, right? And combine that, you know, with 
marketing, with operations, those kind of uh, management, uh, uh, management uh, perspective in that professionalism, then you will have what we call it the powerful woman. And this is what we need right now during the COVID-19. So this is my conclusion. That's my hypothesis that I, 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 I shared to you. Perhaps you might be interested to conduct a further research on that. And this is my simple, very humble conclusion. And I believe that, uh, you know, logically just using your hunch, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is the chance that we going, we can uh, take to, to, uh, to uh, um, what you call it, secure our economic growth now and in, in the future. So thank you very much. I hope uh, uh, you, you enjoy my presentation and uh, I'll give this uh, back to uh, uh, Dian. Thank you so much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om Sandi Sandi Om. Uh, study Gap. And, uh, sorry, not thank Study Gap. Thank you, Dr. Masuri. Thank you. Thank you. It thank was you. overwhelming. Thanks, Thanks to, to the women, women around, around the world too. too. Okay. Uh, we are coming to the ice breaking session. Your Mrs. Moderator, Mrs. Jen Riyasari, the time is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Musi. Nice presentation about uh, women. Uh, I guess uh, women now has uh, a great role in the business. The power of women. Not also, we can say that the power of mama, but it's more uh, wider, it's more greater. Okay, uh, so I can say that uh, gender regulation is, uh, many of gender regulation uh, actually in Indonesia. Uh, and now more than 50% SME business sector is held by women. So. Uh, women now can be more professional, can be more entrepreneur. Not only just uh, stay at home, stay at house, uh, taking care of child, but he, she can also doing her business, uh, just using her mobile phone. Okay. Uh, and I also remember that uh, yesterday is SMEs this international right mr musri uh, hari that, UMKM. Uh, yesterday is sma oh, yes, international yes, uh, we, right? we we actually celebrate the uh, thank you so much professor mm -hmm. suyanto we celebrate uh, what we call it the uh, uh, un uh, msme day every 27th of june yeah. So, right. and it was uh, uh, declared uh, in uh, in 2016. I went to the headquarters of uh, uh, what you call it, the United Nations, with mm -hmm. with uh, with uh, the Minister of uh, Cooperatives and SME of Indonesia at that time, Puspa uh, Yoga, to mm -hmm. uh, to declare that uh, with some other countries. So it's quite a historical uh, a moment for me to to be there at the uh, UN with the minister at that time. So, 27th of June. Yes, don't forget that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, for some attendants that uh, not know that who Mr. Musri was, uh, I can share your background. Well, just make it short. It's not important because I would not like from Professor Sianto. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we, we introduce our speakers all speakers all right all right okay uh here's some background for dr jackie musri uh, now is the uh, deputy chairman of at mark Frost incorporated chief executive officer of mark Frost institute director of tourism and indonesian marketing association uh, until 2020 head of philip call uh, philip kotler center for asian marketing foundation as well as the executive director of marketing professional certification institute it's like a uh, lembaga sertifikasi profesi pemasaran uh, certified uh, for the marketing uh, president of international council for small business indonesia president of rupa ukm indonesian foundation 
and one of the curator for Wonderful Indonesia Calendar of Events 2019 and 2020, appointment by Ministry of Tourism of the Republic Indonesia. And his background is from Diploma in Civil Engineering, uh, Building and Roadway Construction, Construction Majority from Institute Technology, 10 November, Surabaya, Indonesia. Bachelor of Economics, Majority in Marketing Management from University of Indonesia. Master of Management, uh, Majority Marketing Management and Doctorate in Management. Majority in Strategic Management from Management Science Postgraduate Program at the University of Indonesia. And also, uh, Mr. Musri Holder, the Certified Professional Marketer, Asia Pacific, and was assigned as a team member to revise the syllabus of CPM. Uh, here's some background for Mr. Musri. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and also he, many books that you write now. Okay, uh, for the attendance, hold your question for Mr. Musri. We'll discuss uh, later after all speakers that uh, presented her, uh, his material. Uh, we have Professor Suryanto. Yes, 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 I see Hello, Professor. Professor. Hello, Hello, Professor Suryanto. Are you there? Are you there? Okay. okay. Please, please uh, thank you. How are hey, you today, Professor, Professor Yanta? And you? <laughs> yeah, uh, we are, we are great. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. So are, so you are you ready for, for delivering your materials? materials? Sure. The moderator, please. Time is yours. Good morning, Prof. Yanta. Oh, good morning. Okay. How are you today? Alhamdulillah. Looks like you're busy today. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you may start it now? Yes, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, As time is yours. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, kan? Peace upon you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, I would like to talk about higher education crisis management. Yeah, kan? University, uh, uh, Universitas Amicom experience. <laughs> I think uh, very interesting. My name uh, M. Suyanto, Su Min Good, Yanto, smart and handsome. <laughs> so Suyanto, good, smart and handsome. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, I divided my presentation into parts. First, uh, my PowerPoint, and second, my video. COVID-19 push word to turning point. <laughs> I think very interesting about turning point. Uh, what is the crisis? Uh, basically, the crisis is turning point. Uh, because uh, my, my, my PowerPoint, uh, 80 pages, so uh, I present quickly. <laughs> uh, industry for uh, 1.0, uh, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. Today is uh, 4.0. So what is the crisis? Uh, disruptive and unexpected. I think very interesting. Yeah. Uh, disruption. What is disruption? Disruption is uh, displaces existing market, industry or technology and technology and produces something new, more efficient, more worthwhile. Disruption. So Where do you want to be? 
Anda kepingin ada di mana? Ya. Uh, because, uh, sorry. Today's this digital disruption. Software is eating the world. 2005, print media, TV, cable, travel, retail, disruption. Started uh, 2015, education, healthcare, banking, automotive, telecommunication, insurance. Where do you want to be? Okay. And university, we have uh, four generation university. The first is first generation university, second generation university, and the third generation university, and the fourth generation university. Majority of higher education in the second generation university. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> uh, objective of this university for second university education and research. Role of university as discovering nature. Method is monodisciplinary science. Human capital development, professional and scientist. Orientation is national. Language, national language. Organization, faculties and management is part-time academic. I think very interesting. Maybe uh, in maturity of higher education combination and the second generation university and the third generation university. The third education, research, and how no exploitation. Creating value, interdisciplinary science, professional, scientists and entrepreneurs yeah. and global English institute and centers professional management so the turning uh, the turning point I think is very interesting turning point in Chinese language turning point is way chi ways is opportunity c is the threat i think very interesting if you choose a uh, first generation university or the second generation university for the future you will die <laughs> so i try uh, amicom try to work the fourth generation university Today, I would like to share to you about how Amicom toward the fourth generation university. Uh, this is Amicom, the fourth generation university. The fourth generation university, uh, objective of university is education. Education plus distant learning. Research is innovation, open innovation. Research not only for research, research for commercialization. It's like Stanford University, Harvard University. Very important. I think very interesting. So we hope uh, university in Indonesia toward uh, the fourth generation university. Nibling value creation, multi-actor innovation, professional scientist, entrepreneur, and artist <laughs> like me, <laughs> uh, and ecosystem, innovation spaces, and uh, the management is disruptor. Pioneer disruptor? I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Amicom roadmap, 2030. Education, innovation, yeah. uh, IP, okay, number IP, 1,000, yeah, kan? international award, 200, but today we have uh, 800 international award. Uh, method, multi-actor innovation, human capital, professional, scientist, entrepreneur, and artist, yeah, kan? orientation, ecosystem, yeah. uh, 
uh, organization innovation spaces here management disruptor this is very uh, interesting uh, creative we have creative economy part for the future 75% revenue from amicom from creative economy part and for the future 2030 alumni entrepreneur is 30% i think very interesting okay management amicom disruptor <laughs> maybe but my gpa 2.0 <laughs> Two point zero five three. Only see, <laughs> but uh, Universitas Gajah Mada piagam penghargaan or what from Muhammad Syanto alumni terbaik, the best alumni. <laughs> uh, I think it's very interesting. Uh, but my GPA two point zero, <laughs> but uh, alumni terbaik, the best alumni for innovation, design, and creativity. Uh, Ministry of uh, Law and Human Rights, yeah. uh, insan kreatif bidang ekonomi kreatif, yeah. uh, kreatif human and kreatif ekonomi, I think. Uh, uh, tokoh perubahan <laughs> by Republika, because uh, I produce animation and I sell to global market. Very interesting. Uh, today we have. 40 international award from uh, from my film yeah okay majalah swa management 100% asli the true indonesian management <laughs> uh, the first is pak jokowi uh, our president yeah, kan? uh, pak Cho, uh, pak cokorda pak bu uh, pak alek nurdin uh, bu resma mayor of surabaya and i don't know yeah why because i am very handsome <laughs> okay and objective of the university yeah. uh, education and opening innovation uh, pilot pilot project uh, from uh, ministry of education research and technology yeah. uh, sec university for uh, from state university and two from private university from uh, uh, from state universities gajah mada uh, universitas gajah mada institut teknologi bandung universitas indonesia and institut teknologi surabaya Pli pilot project for distant learning and two private university universitas bina nusantara and amikong <laughs> i think it's a good opportunity for me yeah, kan? Uh, so COVID is an uh, opportunity and our business is uh, very interesting in COVID-19. This is my student. Uh, every month, 1,000 until uh, 3,008 dollars. Uh, I think very interesting. Student. Uh, in Indonesia, maybe uh, 15 juta rupiah sampai 40 juta rupiah. I think very interesting. Uh, student, this is uh, the fourth generation university. The fourth generation uh, university, our research, uh, our flagship, flagship research is uh, animation film. We collaborate with Hollywood producer, Hollywood uh, story writer, Hollywood uh, uh, director, and Hollywood visual effect. This is our film. Uh, we have money, we have scopus, and we have hak kekayaan intellectual, property right. I think very interesting. We try toward the fourth generation university. And today we have uh, eight international award and 210 national award. Uh, 
and role enabling value creation. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> this is uh, our model, yeah. uh, value creation platform. From culture to ideation, design, production, branding, channeling, and value. Okay, value. Yeah. I think very interesting. I'm not sell a product, but value. In Indonesia, I sell animation maybe 10 juta rupiah. <laughs> yeah. But to Hollywood, I think 10 juta US dollar. This is value. Very different. Yeah. I think so, very interesting about our university. Okay. This is intellectual property, hak kayaan intelektual. Yeah. We have 363 students per year, very interesting. More than 100,000 per year. Very interesting. Maybe uh, the biggest uh, intellectual property, right? By student in Indonesia. Uh, uh, our method, uh, multi-actor innovation. Human capital development is my alumni is professional, entrepreneurship, yeah, entrepreneur, scientist, and artist. Uh, the, the second generation university are not professional and scientists. The third, professional, scientists, and uh, entrepreneur. The fourth generation plus artists. It's like me, artist, <laughs> executive producer, story writer, cinematographer and director of film. This is uh, our job. <laughs> okay, this is a uh, incubator. We have incubator. For example, uh, Happy Car per year, uh, five, five point seven million rupiah omsetnya <laughs> revenue generation. I think uh, this is uh, incubator. Accelerator in in the world, so, you know, you know about 500, yeah, 500 in Silicon Valley, National University Singapore in Singapore, Y Combinator in Silicon Valley, Fast Forward in Silicon Valley, Brings in Hong Kong, uh, uh, maybe Canada, uh, uh, Portugal, and heads in Poland. Yeah. A BV Amicom Business Park. I think very interesting. Uh, we have an uh, uh, incubator accelerator. Today, my alumni, uh, Princeton University, alumni entrepreneurs, 11%. Harvard, 30%. MIT, 15%. Amicom, 20%. And Stanford, 29%. I think very interesting. So Stanford is uh, benchmark. It's my benchmark for our university. This is uh, alumni artist, director of Battle of Surabaya. This is artist, designer of General Electric. I think the uh, the top company in the world, <laughs> General Electric. This is uh, from my student. Yeah. Orientation ecosystem. Uh, this is my benchmark, Silicon Valley. Uh, Amicom is like that. We call creative economy part. Yeah. Combination in uh, university, supporting by government, uh, by company, 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 Amicom business part, an incubator, community, and we collaborate with Silicon Valley Innovation Center, and we, we collaborate with Hollywood. I think very interesting. This is, we call creative economy part. Taman economy creative. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I try to write in Scopus, <laughs> uh, creative economy part, the first creative economy part in the world, I think. Very interesting. Yeah. 
and then organization innovation spaces. Uh, we have radio, yeah. we have television, we have advertising agency, we have game studio, software house, we export our game to Qatar, yeah, Doha, shopping mall Doha, Qatar, yeah. Singapore, yeah. And we have uh, IC, ICT company, 10 uh, airport in Indonesia, Sukarno Hatta, Murah Rai, Sepinggan Balik Papan Airport, uh, information system designed by our company. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, our, pres our president, Pak Jokowi. <laughs> Uh, we try to design information system for agriculture. And the flagship of our research is animated, world animated feature film. Why world animated feature film? Because the price of an animated film is more than that of an aircraft. Uh, I think very interesting. For example, uh, Frozen. $1,274 million, but Boeing 347, eight generation, only $352 million. In Indonesia, $4.6 trillion, frozen $16.6 trillion. Rupiah. Very interesting, animation. China, Monkey King, uh, gross, gross, gross sale, one hundred and fifty million dollars in Indonesia, two trillion. Yeah. Comac ARG, yeah, made by China, yeah, can gross only three hundred million dollars. So animation, <laughs> uh, gross sale of animation more than <laughs> an aircraft. I think very interesting. Uh, the wine races, the wine races from Spain, yeah, uh, 118 million dollars, satu enam trillion. Uh, aircraft MRC 70, yeah. uh, only 40 million dollars. So, animation more than uh, an aircraft. Why would animated film? Because long life product. Who is the richest artist in the world? Matt Damon. Uh, Matt Damon, Kino Reeve, Morgan Freeman. No, the artist, the richest artist in the world is Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse is the richest artist in the world because it already has franchise sales value up to $8.5 billion. This is the artist, yeah, the richest artist in the world. Very interesting. So we try our research as animation. Okay. I went to uh, uh, Hollywood, yeah. supporting by uh, government, Common Dickwood, <laughs> Ministry of Education yeah. and Culture. Uh, and then I went to Warner Bros. How to enter uh, US market? My film. Oh, Mr. Sianto, for first, you must have lawyer. Second, talent agency. The third, I mean, lawyer. And the fourth, lawyer. So lawyer is very, import, very important for uh, film. I have lawyer, Mickey Mearson. Who is Mickey Mearson? Disney lawyer. Uh, I think very interesting. I pay because my friend. Uh, I pay you, friend. <laughs> Friend, friend, and friend. I pay. Ah, yes, very cheap. I think. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Friend. <laughs> uh, and this is uh, Oliver Stone. Yeah. 
and uh, Clint Eastwood family. Clint Eastwood family invited me in Hollywood. Mr. Suyanto, yeah, yeah, please, yeah, datanglah ke rumahku, <laughs> please. And it's Francis Eastwood and Alexander Wright. Uh, Nikki Miesser said, uh, Mr. Suyanto, you make friends with a uh, Clint Eastwood family because Clint Eastwood family is Hollywood royalty. Okay, thank you, Mickey. <laughs> and then it's uh, Manu Garki, executive producer. And today I, yeah, we collaborate with Manu to make maybe a uh, 10 film. Nah, this is uh, Ethan Equis, uh, director. And uh, two weeks ago, I, I video conference with visual effect, beauty and the peace. Nick Kamencho. Yeah. Today, Nick Kamencho, we collaborate our film, Ajisaka. Collaborate with uh, Nick Kamencho. Uh, two weeks ago. Now, I think very interesting. This is our research. Research not only for research, but for commercialization. This is the fourth generation university. Collaboration with global company. And this is a uh, winner. You know, our film, Petal Surabaya winner in Korea, uh, best, uh, best grand prize. Yeah. And and friends, yeah, uh, best animation, uh, and Berlin best animation, uh, and Milan best animation, uh, uh, and Toronto best writer, yeah. and London, uh, the villain of this uh, Battle of Surabaya, is John Wright, uh, British, <laughs> but in London. Best movie, I think very interesting. Uh, best animation. Uh, and Hollywood International Moving uh, Picture Film Festival, November 10. Best animation. Yeah, this is. Uh, uh, and Red Carpet, uh, my speech, uh, uh, this award for my country, Indonesia. For my university, Amicom University. For my team, MSV Studio, and for my family. <laughs> I think it's, uh, this is the first uh, speech, I think, in Hollywood. <laughs> uh, and red carpet, Hollywood. It says, today, Battle of Surabaya, we have uh, uh, 40 international award. And how to leverage uh, intellectual property right of film, yeah. theater, college, yeah. and so on. This is uh, our uh, cinema. Yeah. And, and Taman Mini Keong Mas, Theater Keong Mas, yeah, Battle of Surabaya. Uh, and China, yeah, I think it's very interesting. We distribute uh, uh, Maya and the Bee as well. Yeah. Uh, and television, free television plan, yeah. Garuda, Bate, Qatar, Etihad, yeah. and Best TV China, yeah. uh, Star TV China, and Guangdong TV China, Swangdong TV China, and Amazon Prime. I think it's very interesting. Uh, we can our research uh, to make. Uh, commercialization and November 10 and UK, Amazon UK. We hope uh, uh, the first film collaborate with Hollywood, yeah, two million dollars. Uh, we hope uh, cross sale seven, uh, eight million dollars. I think very interesting, yeah. Uh, our film Ajisaka, we collaborate with Nick Kamecho, visual effect of uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, we hope uh, seven point five million dollars. Yeah, and if seven point five million dollars, so uh, more than and 
our aircraft N219 uh, by PT Dilkandara. <laughs> I think very interesting. Any mission, we hope uh, more than an aircraft. And this is, uh, we collaborate with Hollywood, Akira, seven, eight million dollars. And top universities in Indonesia, uh, because uh, we have uh, the fourth generation university, uh, number one is Amico, based on student. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 200 uh, at three per study program. Number two, number three, number four, and number. This is very important. I think it's uh, because we have uh, uh, the fourth generation university. This is in Indonesia, cukup uh, banyak research. Yeah. ITS is a uh, motor cassette by ITS, yeah, kan? N209 by Lapan, e voting by BPT, Sperna Sexing by Lipi, Converter Kit by uh, Private, yeah, kan? Katalis Merah Putih by ITB, yeah, kan? Kemudian Stem Cell of Universitas Erlangga, uh, Padi Unggul EPB, S. Uh, TS, EWS, Bencana Longsor by UGM, and Research Film Animation by Universitas Amikom, Yogyakarta. I think very interesting. <laughs> uh, this is by uh, Commander Stack Dikti. Yeah. And then this is our platform. We hope. Uh, Uh, 2025 uh, center world class animated feature film industry and 2030 uh, center world class uh, creative industry creative industry and then indonesia have got <laughs> uh, as a center of animated feature film after that thank you Thank you for your attention. I think that's all. Peace upon you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank, Thank you, you Prof. Sianto, for the insight. Uh, so, we are going to the question and answer session, right? Uh, before we discussion, uh, here's some Mr. Sianto background. Okay, uh, maybe a uh, few of attendants know that Professor Dr. M. Suyanto M.M. is Rector of University Amicom Yogyakarta, Indonesia, and also the entrepreneur. His education is FMIPA Fisika Gajah Mada University, Magister Management in Gajah Mada University, PhD in, in management uh, from Iowa, USA, Doctor of Ilmu Ekonomi from Airlangga University, uh, Surabaya, Indonesia, majority in Syariah Economics, and become a professor since uh, May 1st, uh, 2008, majority in a business strategic management and marketing. He also has a lot of awards and do some a lot of research. Uh, some awards that uh, 2016, the Publica Change Figure Award, Winner National Intellectual Property Award, and the Indonesia Management Style by SWA Magazine, and Winner Asian Development Citra Award in 2005. Okay, uh, that I conclusion from Mr. Suyanto 
presentation is turning point is important, right, professor? Yeah. And we need to collaboration. We can uh, handle our business alone. We need to collaboration with others. Okay, uh, I think same with uh, Mr. Musri said that collaboration is important in uh, business area. Okay, for the discussion, we can open it now. Yes. Jesse, uh, I see. I see the in the Q and A. We have we have some questions. Yeah. Nine nine, nine questions, yes. right? Okay, maybe. Uh, uh, we separated uh, section one. Okay. Three questions. Okay, on first okay. term is three three questions. Three questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, the attendance can be uh, live. So, uh, we have. We have a question from oh, okay. uh, the first questions. I don't know is any more. Yes. Your name. Maybe you can raise your hands for the in order to achieve sustainability, sales require ethical investment are expensive, and of course it will increase price of product and of course sales we also go down how to overcome them uh, can you raise your hand sir or ma'am so is this directed to to me or yeah um... oh. We try to to live the attendance so we can ask to whom these questions. Okay. Okay, so please, dear participant, if you want to ask something, do not hesitate to ask the panelists. Okay, please raise your hands up and tell you for your questions. Okay. Oh. Okay. Hello. Good Hello. morning, ma'am. Yeah, good morning. Can you listen to me? Okay, yeah. so we yeah. can. Okay, thank you. I'm Sirutami from Tangerang. I'm a lecturer and I'm the registered IP consultant. I I I wrote uh, my suggestion or my question to Prof Suyanto on the chat room, but you didn't uh, read and you didn't um, uh, explain. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. For okay, Prof Suyanto, please share us how you can be the best in many aspects, and you do not work alone, do you? Thank you. This is just my question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ma'am. Okay, please, Prof. Sianto, you may answer her questions. Time is yours. Yeah, I think uh, uh, my formula is uh, smart in uh, entrepreneur. <laughs> smart is one as uh, uh, spiritual intelligence. Uh, in Indonesia, maybe kecerdasan spiritual atau sikap mental positif, positive attitude, the first is very very important I think the formula. The second is uh, menciptakan mimpi dan berusaha untuk mengejarnya. You have a dream, yeah. Dream is very important, yeah. Um, and the smart A is ambil langkah. Yeah. Today you must uh, the first step is very important. The thousand step started with a first step. First step is very important. 
and the fourth is, is rahasia success the secret of success is uh uh Jeki said that uh, i win you win communicate with other with empathy collaboration and make synergy i think the third very important and finally uh, the fourth is terimalah kegagalan sebagai bagian dari pelajaran yeah. if you fail i think it's very important is for for yeah we are studying from uh, the fail i think very important and we use uh, subconscious yeah. otak bawah sadar uh, and then a positive attitude this is smart in insyaallah <laughs> doa bisa mengubah segalanya bu <laughs> i think it's yes, you know. yes thank you very much prof suyanto yes i think so then and i do them also and uh, many many magic given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to me yes to us thank you very much and um let me tell you my husband is uh, was uh, the one of the committee for your akil anugerah kekayaan intelektual okay uh, yes mr said nafik from dgip director general of intellectual property kemen hukam okay uh yes yeah, thank you okay right. thank you ma'am sri utami from Yo, Prof. Yanto, the secret of success is positive mental attitude, chasing the dream, go ahead and learn from mistake. Very interesting, Prof. Yanto. So, we are going to the second question. Yes, so in the Q&A, uh, I guess the first questions may be, uh, I don't know, Dr. Kung or uh, Dr. Jackie can answer the questions. In order to achieve sustainable sales require ethical investment are expensive and of course it will increase price of product and of course sales will also go down. How to overcome them? Oh. Oh, okay, thank you. thank you for the questions. Well, um, this is a very interesting question about ethical investment. Um, what I'm trying to say is, um, uh, let's start with something small. Before you start your business, everything, everything, not only business, your activities, whatever, you have to start with something uh, uh, very important, which is what we call mm -hmm. it in Bahasa, we call it the Nurani, mm -hmm. right? That's it. That's the first investment you had got to have. You have a good Nurani, you have good consciousness, conscience, something like that. Then, hopefully starting from that, everything will follow. So I think before we think about ethical investments, it's very too sophisticated. Start with something, you have a good deeds, you have want to do something good. That's, that's a starting point first. Let's put it this way. I'm a bad guy and I have an ethical investment. I'm, it's not going to be good anyway. I, I got my all the, 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 the funding in a proper way, but I don't have a good intention. That's not doing any good for the for the society as well. So I think let's start from something like that. If you say that's going to increase the price of product, well, yes, it is. But then if you find the right segment that appreciate that, that's okay. As long as that segment is quite big and it's growing to support to sustain your business. So we cannot just uh, see it in a in a in a what you, in a, what you call it a, a snapshot like that. You have to have have a you know a, a big a, a, a huge a wide uh, perspective on it you cannot just start like from oh it's expensive you know that's not the way it starts you know a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, startups I, I i i met them they start with a small a very simple thought that they want to do something good for others and as human being as human being you know as you know what we have to start right now uh, doing good business creating value with values that's it so we start with humanity as the as the platform of doing business but if you cannot do that it's okay as well you can do something else but as long as it is legal put it that way if you cannot do uh you know all that uh uh quote unquote uh difficult approach fire find a, a, a more uh a, a, a find a simpler approach 
as long as you're not harming the environment, you're not harming the society, that's good already. I remember Dalai Lama said, this is very important, Dalai Lama said, the purpose of life is to make others happy. That's the purpose of life. But if you cannot make them happy, at least don't hurt them. That's good already. Mm -hmm. That's enough already. Okay, I think that's my answer. Okay. Uh, Thank you. So the ethical is uh, important. Quite interesting, I think. Yes. Again. Thank you, Dr. Musri. Okay, for the next questions, uh, it's for Dr. Kamnik uh, from Rojari. Uh, what business grow about you after pandemic 19 in global? Dr. Ku, you may answer the questions. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, for my opinion is, the business course, I think, is both online and offline business. Because still offline business also important for the business. And then uh, the business need to uh, improve more service. And also use like, uh, I give for example, in the retail business, they must uh, coverage or integrate about logistics and technology because for the logistic, we need to think of physical flow. Uh, uh, send the supplier to end customer, end customer. And also for the information flow about technology to conclude the, uh, the important point, the key point for physical flow and also financial flow. Also important because if we do the business, the financial is important to plan their business. So even the agriculture, I think after COVID-19, agriculture, if they can use e-logistics to sell their product, I think uh, we can help the farmer to be internal, new internal by themselves. Something like that. Thank you. Thank you, so, Dr. Kuhn. Technology supporting, right? So, do we have any questions? Uh, not yet. Not. We have a uh, lot of questions. Okay, uh, session two, right? Yeah. Yes, we're going to the sec a second term. Okay. We need three, we need three questions, questions again? again? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So please, dear participant, if you have any question, do not hesitate to ask the panelists. Just raise up your hand. Okay, next question is from Mr. Kiswoyo. Uh, the results of Chakra Borti and Mandal's research show, show that Thailand and Indonesia have same two problems in supply chain operation rising energy costs and rising human labor costs are two main problems detrimental to its interest. Enforcement of human labor is a major requirement in Asian countries. A company use human capital can change organizational culture by applying new ideas to counter COVID-19 crisis. Maybe it to Dr. Kung, I guess. Dr. Kung, you may answer this question. Uh, come again for the question. How companies use human capital can change organizational culture by applying new ideas to counter COVID-19 crisis. Uh -huh. Okay, I, I think for the for the way to improve the business, I think uh, for human capital, I think not only uh, the manager of business to provide uh, the strategy to improve the, the human resource and also the policy of the government also. For example, in Thailand now, the government gave the like uh, the rule when we, we go anywhere, we need to download application one application in Thailand is the name is Thai Chana. Mm. Uh, Chana that means win. 
if we want to across COVID-19 or the other crisis, we need, we need to help to solve the problem together. So both government and business should be uh, follow the, the rule of how, how we solve the problem, how we can manage or organize the organizational to sustainable. Oh, thank you. So there's one app in Thailand. Yeah, I think in Thailand, luckily, uh, the government can solve the problem fastly. Mm, okay, okay. okay, thank you, Dr. Kung. Uh, next question from uh, who is this? Kuswanto. Uh, I guess is from the uh, for Dr. Jackie. I guess. Right. Many women are living in suburban. This situation yeah. described that some of them get difficult to access the economic aspect especially UMKM. Uh, yep, all right. Okay. So in that situation, I think this is where, where the role of government should take place. And remember, you just cannot rely on the government, you know, the government from Jakarta can, cannot. Mm -hmm. The region, the head of the village, the mayor, the governor should take care of that as well with the support of the, uh, uh, what you call central go uh, go uh, government. Right, they should provide what we call it the infrastructure and policies to support them. But remember, you just, you just cannot put infra uh, infrastructure and policies in one area just like that. You have to measure the potential of that area, so you know exactly what infrastructure they really need, what policies that really work there, and what product they can make, what uh, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, what you call it, um, resources they need, what what access they need. It, it's, it's a very comprehensive, uh, what you call it, um, analysis. But I have to keep, uh, but please keep in mind, if you do too long analysis, you, you're doing your analysis too long, it's not gonna work anyway. Don't get caught in a situation what we call it paralysis by analysis. Too much analysis, but no execution. So keep it simple. And again, execution is number one, I said. Right. It should be very fast. And you should coordinate with uh, many institutions there. And you should, again, uh, do a lot of uh, uh, very, uh, 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 what you call it, uh, uh, proper monitoring and evaluation. So again, in this situation, that's where they, uh, the, the, the local government, the regional government should, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, show their, their uh, uh, roles. The, 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 the governor, the mayor, the region, the head of the village, they cannot just acting as a bureaucrat, but they should acting as an entrepreneurial bureaucrat. Fast, quick, simple, and result oriented, not process oriented. So okay. this is okay. what, what I have in my mind. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the, uh, our government uh, also have uh, village allocasi dana desa, right? Uh, maybe it can uh, help for the economic growth in a village. Yeah, yeah, but you have to allocate that fund to the mm -hmm. right uh, people, to the right business, to the right, uh, what you call it, a community. You just cannot be a fund, I give it to you. That's mm -hmm. not gonna make it happen, mm -hmm. right? You're not gonna get the return of your fund. So right. it's not gonna be effective. So you have to be careful in that. All right, okay, agreed. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jackie. So. One last question? Yes, for the second term. Okay, uh, it's from QA for Mr. Musri. I'm Popo Natoyo, Jakarta. I'm interested with your presentation pointing to how many business should be calculated the risk. Relating the topic this morning, what your view or maybe suggest with regard to the risk calculation to be take for begin the SME business? All right. Every decision, every morning we wake up, we should make a decision. Taking a bath, taking breakfast, go here and there. Were all every and each of our decision will have a, uh, you know, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, relationship with the, with the risk that, that you know, uh, in the future. So 
in business is very simple very simple if i go to that business number one can i create value right if i create value what the resources are resources have to invest that's the risk already if i create value who's gonna go this value to for me for my company for the society for this what stakeholders this is also another risk that you have to uh, calculate and again, if you are in the business, there are only two risks that you have to, uh, what you call it, uh, calculate in a simple way. Just look at your income statement from top to the middle line. There are, uh, there are risks that we call it operational risk. Okay. From the middle line to the bottom line, there are financial risks. If you can understand the operational risk and the financial risk, that's a very, very, uh, what you call it, uh, a good starting point before you run your business. Operational risk and financial risk. Then you will go further to your balance sheet, your, your assets. Is it going to, to create sales or not? Is it going to create a good return on uh, in the, uh, 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 assets or not? That's another thing. So this is what I'm trying to say. Make it simple. Don't get complicated, okay? And make sure if you put money, that's also another risk of your investment is great is it going to create return that's another risk that you have to calculate i think that's what we call it a simplified calculated risk thank you okay thank you okay so i think i found an interesting question from herman wahyu dwi mailana and i think these questions are really sweet with Professor Suyanto. Professor Suyanto, could you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. The question is, this is Herman from Amma Yogyakarta. My question is to Mr. Suyanto. Now, another aim of a higher education is business. At this pandemic crisis, what steps should a higher education do in sustaining the business and managing the crisis? So please. Okay. Uh... Uh, COVID-19 is a uh, push world to turning point. I think it's turning point. Uh, turning point is uh, very interesting. Weiji, opportunity, opportunity and threats. Yeah, can. We choose opportunity or we choose threat. Yeah, can. I think we choose opportunity. Uh, high education from uh, the second generation university to third generation university and uh, the fourth to the fourth generation university. Uh, this is my suggestion. So uh, we try to mix uh, leadership of universities uh, disruptor, yeah. uh, more than innovator, yeah, more than innovator, uh, because it's very important in this. Uh, uh, AIDS about uh, the industry 4.0. Very uh, sex in Silicon Valley, uh, uh, sex field uh, uh, by Silicon Valley is developed in Silicon Valley. First, it's a uh, big data and uh, predictive analytics. The second is uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. The third is uh, augmented reality and uh, virtual reality. Uh, the fourth is uh, autonomous vehicle. Uh, the fifth is uh, blockchain and Internet of Things. Platform of platform today is uh, social business, big data, mobile, and cloud computing. I think it's very important for higher education. Yeah. And for the future, uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, I discussed with uh, executive producer from, from uh, Hollywood, Manu Garki, Mr. Suyanto, three years and four years for the future, uh, professional work from home. Ah, very important. <laughs> so, Distance learning for high education very important. Yeah. So, and open innovation, 
uh, uh, Mr. Musri said that uh, collaboration with companies is very important. Uh, we combine distance learning and innovation, open innovation uh, for towards the fourth generation university. Thank you. Thank you for the answer, Rosianto. So uh, I conclude from Prof. Yanto's answer, we need to do social business and collaboration with companies. Thank you, Prof. Yanto. Okay, so what's next, ma'am? Okay. Uh, in the section three, we have ACT, and we will do for simulation of our donation. Okay, please, Mrs. Sukiyarti and the... Oh, we still have a question? Oh, sorry, sorry. We still, we still have, have question. questions in Q&A. Uh, yes, we Okay, uh, the next questions, I don't know, is uh, anonymous and this. Uh, what step can be taken now to help small enterprise? with consideration long-term implication of remaining resilient in a pandemic crisis and staying on digital path. How small enterprise can also support low, for low carbon transition, care about social and environment to build a stronger and more sustainable business economy. Dr. Kung, you can answer these questions. Okay, for small enterprise, right? Yeah, for well, uh, small enterprise and more sustainable business economy. Okay, for small enterprise, if uh, I, if for my opinion or my suggestion that uh, for small enterprise, uh, most of them now, uh, we are uh, try, try to use uh, e-commerce also. Uh, because of now, uh, for social online is more important for the business. They can they can share uh, their business about product and service. So I think uh, for the technology is important. So maybe uh, maybe uh, technology important, but for the human resource also they need to learn more because if they they don't learn about how how to survive for uh, business now, maybe the robot will replace them. And for uh, if you see during the COVID, during the COVID, uh, we can saw new entrepreneur. They can sell uh, their, their product via online. And what's point? Again, come again for the point. Okay, okay. Uh, how small enterprise can also support low, car low carbon transition, care about social and environment to build a stronger and more sustainable. Okay, like I showed the last slide for me, for small enterprise and if we think of the business, mm -hmm. uh, both business and environment, you can use the theory from our working, sufficiency economy. Uh, because uh, for this theory, uh, teach us to how, how to manage that business. Uh, we need to think of the stakeholder. Because if, if we want sustainable, we need to think of stakeholder and customer's de uh, customer defection. So that's why uh, I, I will uh, discuss on strategy. The strategy of marketing, we, we need to think of the ethical for the business. This is important if we want to want to be sustainable uh, business. Mm. Uh, we need to think of stakeholder. All stakeholders is important. Okay. Uh, the point is uh, stakeholders to make us sustainable uh, business. And also safe environment also. 
Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tu. For the next questions, uh, for Prof. Suyanto, what Prodi who high competitive in Amicom? Okay. He's I, from uh, Muhammad Rojali. Okay. I try to open our PowerPoint <laughs> and my computer. Maybe you have uh, late to join, uh, maybe. I, I think uh, we have uh, very interesting uh, uh, concentration, specialization, very important for PRODI uh, study program. For example, uh, AMICOM study program. Uh, maybe one minute. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so the question is uh, uh, high competitive. Yes, okay. Uh, okay. Ah, very interesting. We have uh, informatic, but we have uh, concentration, networking, uh, software, software engineering, uh, information system. We have financial technology. <laughs> very interesting. E-commerce, uh, multimedia, and communication. Uh, Information technology, we have animation and game because uh, 2D animation is big opportunity. In Hollywood, uh, actor, director, and yeah, they cannot play in, in film, but animation is okay because uh, COVID-19. Uh, so, we can collaborate with uh, Hollywood. Is, is oh, very friendship, I think. Yeah, because uh, animation big opportunity for the future. Uh, and faculty economy and social economy, uh, creative economy, and digital economy. I think <laughs> very uh, very important. Yeah, uh, because uh, industry for point zero. Uh, entrepreneurship is digipreneurship and online business. I think it's uh, uh, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, ilmu komunikasi, communication science is visual design, uh, marketing, broadcasting, and cinema. Uh, I think it's uh, very competitive. Uh, and this year, uh, I have 679 new students from computer science, uh, communication science. So I, I think very interesting. <laughs> uh, okay, well, yeah. maybe uh, continue with the second question, sir. How hmm. to create innovation and creativity environment at okay. Amicom? Uh, and how, how to 
how you create your team to realize that. Okay, yes. This is uh, our platform, yeah. based on culture, from culture and ideation, based on creativity and creativity, ideation, design, production, branding, channeling, and value. Uh, Mr. Uh, Czech uh, said that uh, value, valuation is very important. And creative economy, not product, but value. Yeah. This is, uh, we try to compete. Uh, in Amicom University, the first and uh, gain competitiveness for human resources. Second, flexibility. Uh, the third, uh, quality of work life. Uh, the fourth, uh, legal compliance. And uh, I forget. <laughs> and this is very important for, uh, for make human resource uh, development. This is uh, this platform uh, for Indonesia, for Badan Ekonomi Kreatif, <laughs> Kreatif Ekonomi Board, as I think use uh, this our platform. Culture, edition, design, production, branding, channeling, and value. This is I sell value, not product, said Mr. Morsi. <laughs> okay, thank you, Prof. Suyanto. Uh, we, that we have a uh, final term for discussion. We still have two attendants. First from Mr. Adi Eko Priyono, the most problem of SMEs is the lack of buyers. So even online marketing, creativeness, innovation, diversification have been done. The onset is still down. What the speaker's opinion? Maybe Dr. Kung can answer these questions. Sorry. Okay. Uh, the question about uh, about the uh, yeah. right? yeah. problem yeah. is a small medium enterprise is the lack yeah. of buyer. Okay. So what's uh, your opinion? Mm -hmm. So this point is about impact on operation of the business, right? So the business should be uh, uh prepare the the, the marketing plan or the fundamental change in consumer behavior, like uh, I show the result of my survey. If we know about the consumer behavior, we, we can have the journey to authority must start to build the competency of the business. And the business uh, can be invest more, not, not much, but invest more. Uh, for the digital marketing and prepare the data relevant and also uh, need to agile operation and automation to create stronger uh, capability in e-commerce and they need to think of the security of their business if they use e-commerce. So uh, some of business or SME, in Thai we call SME. Uh, uh, maybe the how to say maybe they need to prepare about uh, the op opportunity uh, designs that um, they will choose uh, the strategy for short uh, minutes. for short minutes. and long term for minutes their business and they need to have the the strategy plan how how to manage the business to go bold. because this is the opportunity because for online business and 
and they can use the chance for online business to improve their business. Thank you. Right, agree. Uh, second question for still from Mr. Adi Ekopriyono. Uh, oh, I guess it's the same. Okay. Okay, second question is for from Anisia Nur Alicia is our student from Sasalvin. The question is to Mr. Jackie Musri. What operational and financial tasks can we undertake to mitigate risk for SMEs? Well, this is a quite a straightforward question and I'll give you a very straightforward answer. Operational delivery, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, delivery uh, and uh, uh, buying things uh, for your, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, 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 cost of goods sold, those kind of things. You can take that off. That's operational, right? You make, a, a, what you call it, a marketing communications, promotions, right? Your operational, your operational activities. That's what we call it risk, okay? For instance, I, you're, I'm standing, uh, uh, you ordered me a, a, a product from Jakarta and I'll send it to uh, Samarang. When you receive it, the color is red and you said, well, this is wrong. I, I need green. So you call me Jackie, the color is wrong. Okay, just send me back. I'll send you back the uh, right color. That's operational risk already. Very simple, as simple as that. So that's why you have better be careful with this. Because so many hidden costs in that operational aspect. That's what you have to, to, to understand. Number two, financial, financial uh, uh, what you call it, the uh, financial uh, aspect. Very easy. Just see, you know, uh, from sales up to that's operational. From EBITDA to net income, that's all where, where you can find all the financial risks. For instance, like this, your amortization, your depreciation, your interest rates, your those are the financial risks. So you just cannot just borrow money without considering how much you have to pay for the interest. You borrow money, a loan from a bank, and you're using credit card, that's borrowing money. But credit card has a bigger uh, interest rate. That's the financial risk as well that you have to take. So if you want to see all those um, operational and financial uh, risks, just go to your income statement and you can find a lot of things that you have to consider before you take decision for operational as well as to decide for your uh, financial decision. I think that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jackie Mosley. Uh, I guess uh, we have answer all questions. Uh, Jati, I'm back to you. Okay, thank, thank you, you Ms. Yen. So we are, uh, we are coming to the giving the e-certificate to the speakers. Okay, so please, Mambian, you may show the e-certificate. Okay. And we will show the certificate from ICSP to Totawin. Okay, please. Okay, here is the certificate of appreciation is awarded to Dr. Hanung Nid Nuntek, Dean of Hatiai Business School, Hatiai University, Thailand. Thank you. Dr. Kung. And next. Yes. The certificate of appreciation is awarded to Professor Dr. M. Suyanto. Thank you for the insight, Prof. Okay, and then we have Okay, certificate of appreciation is awarded to Dr. Jackie Mosri. So thank you for thank your you participation so here. Thank you, thank okay, you so much. Thanks for the insight. Okay, so now we have certificate from ICSB. We also thank you for ICSB for giving. Yeah, giving yeah. Me, uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Well, this this I I I really uh, happy for this uh, uh, event and uh, this uh, seminar webinar, and uh, I really uh, uh, feel very happy to to um, hand over this uh, uh, appreciations to uh, Scholar Tinggi Ilmu Ekonomi Total Wins Maran. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and and really uh, thank you for supporting uh, small medium enterprises in Indonesia. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Musri. So. Uh, we have ACT, and please ACT, the head of ACT, you may come forward with me and with Mrs. Sukiyarti. Okay. We will uh, do a simulation of our Tunisia to distribute okay. the for the for of all attendance that give uh, donation for this webinar. Uh, we. We give all donation to ACT to for covering COVID nineteen, especially in Indonesia. Okay. Okay, you may come forward. Okay, so excuse me, you may stand here. Okay, now. Our president, Mrs. Sugiyarti, would like to give the donation and the ACT will be distributed to the sufferers of pandemic COVID-19. So thanks to all participants here for your donation. Okay. Yes. Okay, and we are so sorry we could not answer all of your questions. Maybe you can share your question by private chat with me, or maybe we, we could give you the numbers or the email of the panelists and you can uh, deliver your question to them. So thank you. Thank you, SED, for coming here. Okay, so finally, we come to the last session in this event that is closing. As the host of today's webinar, I would like to thank, say thanks to uh, uh, the president of the Total Win, Mrs. Dr. Randa Sugiyarti, SAMM. And I would like to say thanks to Dr. Hanung Nunchak, Dean of Business School, Hatian University, Thailand. And also to the Mr. Professor Dr. M. Suyanto, thanks for your knowledge, thanks for your insight. And Thank you, thank you, thank you for Dr. Jackie Mosri. Thanks for your knowledge. Thanks for having thank us you. in this webinar. And also thanks to all participants here. May what we had conducted will be useful for us. And once more, thank you all for the information and knowledge which have been given to us. May it be useful for us. The ladies and gentlemen, if in guiding this event, I made mistake or often someone here, please forgive me. So that's all for me. Thank you. See you on the next occasion. See you total win. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ibu Sujarti, Prof. Suyanto, and also Professor Kanumi. Yeah. Nice meeting you all. God bless Thank you. you. Thank Salam. you, Dr. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Terima kasih for all. Thank yes. you. Kapun ka, Dr. Ko. Kapun ka. See you later. Okay, see you. See you. Welcome to Thailand after after COVID. Oh, of course, of course. Thank you. Thank you.